Hello, my name is Lucas Pau, and this is my Python synthesizer. Today, I'll be giving you a brief overview of how I built my Python synthesizer, and I'll be giving you a demonstration of what types of music and sounds it can play. But first of all, what is a Python synthesizer? Well, let's break that down. A synthesizer is an instrument or device that can generate its own audio signals to be used to play music. And Python is a world-renowned coding language which I use to program these sounds to play on my computer. Now let's talk about some functionalities of my program. First and foremost, it can act as an oscillator. Well, what is an oscillator? Well, let's take a step back and think about what sound is. So all sound, including the music we hear, is generated by waves that can be transmitted through the air. If we plot this graphically, we can get a depiction of a sound wave, such as here. Mathematically, these waves are often represented by functions such as sine or cosine that you may have learned from trigonometry. So over here, I defined a function called create note, which takes in certain parameters that can specify which type of note you want to play. For example, you can specify the note name, you can specify the type of wave signal you want to generate, you can specify the amplitude or volume of the signal, the length in terms of beats, and other filter effects that you can add to the signal. So here I will demonstrate how to create a note. So first I define a new variable called A4 and I specify its parameters to determine the type of note I want to play. So first parameter is the note name A4, which is an A on the fourth octave of the piano keyboard. And then I want to generate a simple sine wave type and I want to generate 100% amplitude with four beats length and no filter effects. To output the sound of the audio signal contained in the variable A4, I use the play command and run it and here's what it sounds like. Notice here that I specify the wave to be of a simple sine type, so it sounds quite robotic and unnatural. But in this function, I can also specify other types of waves that will generate different types of instrumental sounds. To generate new sound signals, you actually just take a linear combination of a bunch of sine signals whose coefficients are determined by a mathematical technique called Fourier analysis. Here are a few examples of different types of sounds you can create that all play the same note but sound different. The next thing my synthesizer can do is generate an ADSR envelope, which stands for Attack, Delay, Sustain, and Release. So in creating our notes, we were allowed to specify the length of the sound signal that we wanted to generate, but it still sounded quite robotic because the sound signal attacked and released its sound immediately. Specifying an attack and release time for each signal can help smooth out transitions between different signals. So now that we've generated all the notes we need, Let's talk about how we can arrange these sequentially to create a musical arrangement. So I created a bunch of variables, each of which contains an audio signal that represents different types of notes that will be played in the song. I then arrange these notes sequentially in different arrays that represent different tracks, and then I overlay the different tracks so that they will play simultaneously. And finally, I use a play command to output my final result. See if you can recognize this song. Now let's move on to the second song. I repeated the same process, except I generated new types of notes using different types of sounds by specifying a different type of wave in the parameter as I initialize each note in a different variable. Again, I arranged the variables that represent each note sequentially in a different arrays in different tracks, which I overlaid so that they can be played simultaneously, and then I use a play command to output the result. See if you can recognize this song. Now let's move on to the third song. 
This song contains a short repeating sequence that occurs in the middle of the song. So I created separate arrays for the intro, the middle, and the ending of the song. I then sequenced the different arrays in the order in which I wanted them to play in the song, iterating over the repeated sequence using a for loop to repeat that section as necessary. Again, I use the play command to output the result. See if you can recognize this song. This final song features sounds from an instrument which I call the random synthesizer. Recall that new sounds can be generated by combining a set of sine waves whose coefficients are determined by Fourier analysis. But for this instrument, I actually generated a set of random coefficients using a random number generator which explains the name. See what you think. So what do you think? I think this signal sounds quite harsh and distorted. So next, I will apply a low pass filter to the audio signal, which does exactly as its name suggests. It allows the low frequency signals to pass right through the audio playback while cutting out the high frequency sounds that sound quite sharp. I think that sounds much better, but in case you are curious about what a high pass filter would do to the audio signal, here's what it would sound like. I think it would sound like an old fashioned telephone because these types of devices weren't capable of picking up certain types of frequencies, so they acted as natural frequency filters. And that's it. Thank you so much for hearing about my Python synthesizer. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about digital signal processing. If you did, please drop a like and a subscribe and see you next time.